thanks for watching and today I would like to prove one of my favorite linear algebra theorems called the rank nullity theorem and this is completely improvised so bear with me what does the rank nullity theorem say theorem suppose v and w are finite dimensional vector spaces are finite dimensional vector spaces and t is a linear transformation from v to w so it's linear then it turns out the rank of t and the dimension of the null space are related then you have the following if you add the dimension of the null space of t and the rank of t which by definition, all it is, it's the dimension of the image. So forget all the pivot stuff and stuff, okay? Dimension of the image of T. If you add them up, you actually get the dimension of your input space. And this proof will show why we need the dimension of the input space, not the output space. And what is this saying? It says that, the, remember the null space measures how bad a linear transformation is. The rank measures how good a linear transformation is. This says that they balance out. The better a linear transformation, the less worse it is. So the higher the dimension of the image, the lower the dimension of the null space of T. Conversely, the bigger the null space of T, the smaller its image. If it sends lots of vectors to zero, then it cannot have a big image. If it sends, if it has a big image, it cannot spend lots of vectors to zero. All right, and without further ado, let me prove this. So proof, let's start with the basis of the null space. So let beta, oh no, let's say v1 up to vm, be a basis for a null of t. Okay, so let me give you a little picture. So this is v and this is null of t. Maybe, maybe. Need more space for that actually. So this is v and some subspace is null of t. And suppose V1 up to Vm, those are your Vi's, right? And what we want to do, let's extend it, so it's a small space, let's extend it to be a whole basis of V. So extend data to a basis uh, V1 up to Vm, so the same vectors, but more than that, so Vm plus 1, dot, 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 up to Vn of V. So we start with those V1 up to Vms, and then we just add vectors until we get a whole basis. And all that's enough to show, so M is the dimension of the null space, it's just enough to show that somehow the dimension of the, or like the rank of t is just n minus m. And the way we do this is just claim okay. it wouldn't make sense to say v m plus 1 up to v n is a basis for the image of t. Because remember what the image lies in the output space. So we need something in W. But here's the thing. What does T do? T takes all those vectors in the null space and sends it to zero. So all those vectors get sent to zero. The other ones are what's important because T sends those vectors to the range. You see, it might send this one here, this one here. I know it gets a bit messy, but all those vectors are in the image. 
because by definition, the image is just a set of all outputs of t. So all we need to show actually is that t of vn plus 1 up to t of vn is a basis for the image. So claim t of vn plus 1 dot 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 t of vn is a basis for the image of t. Why would we be done? Because then n, n, which is the dimension of v, would be equal to m plus n minus m. Why is that important? Well, this is trivial, but look, m is then the dimension of the null space. Because there are m vectors in the basis for null space. And then this one has n minus m vectors. So that would be the dimension of the image of t. And then the point is, once we show this is a basis, then we're done. So let's show it. Um, So we just need to show two things, show that it's linearly independent and that it spans. So let's show linear independence. So suppose, let's say a m plus 1, t v m plus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a n, t v n, is the zero vector. If you want the zero vector in w. Uh, and all we need to show is that those coefficients are zero. But look, t is a linear transformation. So we get t of a m plus 1, v m plus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a n v n, equals to the zero vector. But what does that mean? It means that t takes this vector and sends it to the null space. So a m plus 1, vm plus 1. I'm sorry, t sends it to the zero vector, therefore this vector is in the null space. Plus a n v n. So this is in the null space of t, which I like to remind you we have a basis of, which is the span of uh, v1 up to v, uh, yeah, v m. And then what do we have? So then a m plus 1, v m plus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a n v n. Because it's in the span, it's equal to, let's say, b1 v1, plus dot dot dot, plus b m v n. And then just put everything on the left hand side. So minus b1 v1, dot dot dot, minus b m v n plus a m plus 1, v m plus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a n v n, is a zero vector in this case in v. But look, we know that the whole set is a basis. Remember, because we extended it to be a basis. In particular, this set is linearly independent. Which means that all those coefficients are zero. All the things. So b1 equals zero, dot dot dot, bm equals zero, am plus one, I guess minus, 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 am plus one equals zero, dot dot dot, am equals zero. And you see, that's precisely what we want. We suppose some linear combination gave you the zero vector. Therefore, the, and we showed that the, the only combination is the trivial combination. All right, so this shows it's linearly independent. Now let's show that it spans. So suppose you have a random vector in the image. So that. 
suppose W is in the image of T, which means that W is TV for some V. But now remember, this huge set is a basis. So V is just a linear combo of V1 dot 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 of, let's say, AM minus 1, sorry, AM VM, we'll need this, plus AM plus 1, VM plus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus AN VN for some A1 up to AN. Okay, but we, we don't care what V, we care about W. So, let's just apply T to it. So TV, like you're watching TV, that's T of A1, V1, plus dot, 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 plus A, N, V, N. But that's just A1, T, V, 1, plus dot, 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 plus A, M, T, V, M, plus A, M, plus 1. T, V, M, plus 1, plus dot, 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 plus A, N, T, V, N. But now remember, what was V1 up to Vm? They're all in the null space. So Tv1 up to Tvm, they're all zero. And so in the end, we get that W equals to Am1. Tvm1 plus 1 plus dot 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 plus An Tvn. So what do we have? Any vector in the image is a linear combo of those basis vectors, and therefore it spans. So it's in the span of the set that we want. Tvm plus 1, dot, 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 Tvm. And therefore we are done. This set is in fact a basis for our image, and therefore, just by adding up those two uh, dimensions, we get that it's the same as the dimension of V. And it's important that it's the dimension of V because we're technically adding you know, vectors in V. We started with the basis for the null space of V and extended it to a basis of all of V. That's why it's not dimension of W. And again, no pivots involved, just pure linear algebra. All right, if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.